After looking so good in pre-season testing, Ferrari's 2019 has already fallen apart. As after the first four races, they haven't scored a win and have seen their rival score four consecutive 1-2 finishes. As they just cannot put the pieces together to go and get the Grand Prix win that we expect them to. And it's led to, in my opinion, Ferrari's World Championship bid ending and now their 2019 already looks like a disaster. And in today's video, I'm going to analyse just what has made their 2019 so far a disaster. So to find out why I say this, make sure to check out this video. Now before we go into analysing just what has made Ferrari not been so successful in the first few races of 2019, let's first look at pre-season testing for the team and their first four races. First off, pre-season testing was very good for Ferrari. Their car in terms of pace and grip looked very, very good despite a couple of reliability issues. But coming out of testing, they were looking like the best team in Formula 1. But going into the Australian Grand Prix, they were still pessimistic about their chances against their main rivals, Mercedes, who destroyed Ferrari in Melbourne as Ferrari suffered from setup issues and also had cooling issues, which meant they had to turn down their power unit to try and finish the Grand Prix with both cars. They did finish the Grand Prix with both cars, but only finished in P4 and P5, which for Ferrari, considering how well testing went, was not good enough. Then we went to Bahrain where Ferrari did have the best car, but they were not due to driver and also car errors, basically. They were not able to get the victory that they really should have got. First off, Sebastian Vettel, after qualifying second behind his teammate Charles Leclerc, made a big mistake racing Lewis Hamilton, spun his car, and then lost his front wing due to a tyre vibration that he caused. And then Charles Leclerc, with about 10 laps to go, until his first Grand Prix win and Ferrari's first win of 2019, his power unit started to lose power, then was passed by Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas. And to be honest, he was lucky to get a podium because if the safety car didn't come out, Max Verstappen would have put him off the podium and Charles Leclerc would have finished most likely in P4. Then in Shanghai, Ferrari... Just like Australia did not have the pace yet again compared to their main rivals, as they finished the Grand Prix in 3rd and 5th, there was some quite questionable strategy decisions from Ferrari, also a team orders controversy. But you really have to say, from Shanghai pace-wise, they weren't very impressive and they came out looking a bit foolish. And then in Baku, in a similar way to Bahrain, people were expecting Ferrari to go out there, have the best car, and have a great chance of victory. But again, errors by the driver and also the team led to an unsuccessful weekend. And Charles Leclerc, in qualifying, who had a great chance of pole position in Q2, put it in the wall. And then in the Grand Prix, one, the Ferrari car was not quick enough, and again, made some strategy decisions which weren't exactly the smartest you will ever see. And because of the way their first four races has gone, for me, their World Championship bid is over because they couldn't even hold on to a lead for half a season in 2017 and 2018. How are they going to come back against one of the greatest teams in F1 history? I just don't see how it's possible. And if you compare it to the last two years for Ferrari, it's not looking good statistically going forward for the rest of 2019. As after the first four races in 2017, they had two wins and five podiums and the exact same after four races in 2018. And again, considering how this team tends to get worse as the season goes on, I just don't see how they can compete for the entire season. But do the big people in that team, such as the drivers and the team principal, have a role to play in this? Well, absolutely, they do. Let's start off with Mattia Bonotto. Now, Bonotto, for me, out of testing, did design and direct technically a good car. 
but the car has not compared to mercedes been good enough now i still think the car is good but again just not good enough and it has suffered in the first four races compared to mercedes but the one criticism i have for matai bonotto is that he's not very certain in his leadership of this team for example look at the team order situation with Vettel and Leclerc in Australia, Bahrain and Shanghai. In a couple of those situations, Matai was too late when making certain calls and then sometimes was a bit too early in making certain calls. And that for me stems from him, for me, just not being able to run a F1 team because this guy has no prior experience of that and he is the team principal of the biggest team in Formula 1 in terms of pressure. And because also he doesn't have the experience of running an F1 team, he doesn't know how to manage two drivers who desperately want to beat each other. And also two drivers that at times will refuse team orders. And this is exactly why I thought replacing Maurizio Riva Bene was the wrong decision by Ferrari because... Arriva Bene took Ferrari from not competing for a world championship to nearly winning a world championship in 2017 and 2018 and then replaced him with a guy who has no experience of running an F1 team and his personality doesn't really suit the job that he is currently in. If you're going to run a team like Ferrari and also run rule over two drivers like Sebastian Vettel and Charles Leclerc, you do need a very good and strong personality. And for me, Mattia does not have that. And I think as 2019 goes on, it will be proven that he just does not fit the role of team principal for Ferrari. And I think the pressure of being the team principal for Ferrari will get to him and he will fall under the pressure by the end of this season, I think for sure. And I still think to this day, replacing Maurizio Riva Bene was the wrong decision. He should have stayed in that role. But now let's get on to the drivers and first go to Sebastian Vettel now. Sebastian Vettel for most of 2019 so far has done pretty well considering how the car has been performing. But if you look at his 2019 so far, he hasn't done anything that spectacular. For example, in Australia, he did the best he could with his car but still was not that quick and got passed quite easily by Max Verstappen in Melbourne in the Grand Prix. Then in Bahrain, was never really that well suited to the car and of course made that mistake of Lewis Hamilton. And then in Shanghai and Baku, despite the car not being as good as it could have been, he didn't really do anything in those races or in those weekends and it's been a very unspectacular start for what is a four-time world champion. And I think some of that does have to do with Sebastian Vettel because I think because of the way 2018 ended and how Bahrain went, I think he's trying to keep almost under the radar and not go for aggressive moves or anything like that because he doesn't have a lot of confidence for one in the car and I think a bit in himself. And again, even though the car is not performing as well as it could do, I don't think Sebastian is performing as well as he can because he can definitely be quicker, I think, than he has been so far in 2019. And I think a more confident Sebastian Vettel could get more out of the current 2019 Ferrari car. But also Charles Leclerc, for me, has contributed to Ferrari's downfall after four races in 2019. Now, you may disagree with that, but if you look at his first four races, they haven't been as good as some people out there want to paint out. For example, in Australia, he was quite slow until the final stint of the Grand Prix where he was quite a bit faster than Sebastian Vettel. But then in Bahrain, yes, he was very quick and he did fully, fully deserve to win that Grand Prix. I'm not doubting that. But of course, what happened happened and we have to move on. Uh, but in Shanghai, he was, again, not that good. He was better than he was in Melbourne, but still not that great. Wasn't as quick as Sebastian Vettel that weekend and didn't really get dialed into that track with that car, I think. 
And then in Baku, where Charles is very quick, in qualifying, of course, bottled it and threw it into the wall and threw away, really, his chances of winning the Grand Prix because with the tyre he started on and with the way he was in the first stint of the Grand Prix after starting from P8, if he did start at the front on that tyre, Charles Leclerc could have had a good chance of winning that Grand Prix. But because he made that critical mistake when he did in qualifying, he blew his chances and rightfully did not get an opportunity to race for the win. So again, if you look at the first four races, Charles hasn't actually been that great. The only times he was really great was the weekend in Bahrain and race day in Baku. Everywhere else, he wasn't bad, but he wasn't exactly amazing or great. And I think we can definitely see with him that also his confidence is not sky high, especially after what happened in Bahrain, but also he's not fully suited, I think, to the Ferrari team and just how Ferrari is operating at the moment as they still, Ferrari, are trying to favour Sebastian Vettel over Charles Leclerc. And he's also coming into a team that is still reeling after two failures in a row in 2017 and 2018. And 2019 already looks like it's a failure. So it hasn't exactly been easy for Charles to mould into this team yet. But now let's get on to the most important reason for Ferrari's struggles and that is the car. Now the Ferrari car again after testing looked good. But after the first four races I think we can pretty much confirm... It is not the fastest car. The Mercedes is the fastest car. Now you can talk about excuses such as tyres, setup, cooling, power unit issues, all of that stuff. Wind even. But after four races, if in three of those four races you've been comfortably beaten by another team, I am sorry, your car fundamentally is not as good. You cannot keep blaming it on alternate issues which by the way they are important but they're not all happening at the same time and I don't believe Ferrari are getting unlucky with their car. Again I think it's a good car but it just isn't as good as the Mercedes car. It's pretty easy to see that even when you watch these cars on board. The Mercedes car I would say is at least a quarter of a second better when it comes to aerodynamics and it just looks better in the corners. The Ferrari car does have the power advantage, I think, over Mercedes, but when it comes to cornering speed and grip, I just don't see how Ferrari have a good enough car to beat Mercedes in 2019, and I don't see how they have a good enough car right now to be seriously competitive for a race win. And if you're going to win plenty of races and world championships, you can't just have a car that's great in a straight line. You have to have more than that, and I'm afraid they just don't. The Ferrari car right now is kind of like the Williams car in 2014. It has the straight line speed, but it doesn't quite have the aerodynamic grip to be as good or better than Mercedes. And at certain tracks, as we'll see over 2019, Red Bull as well. And the area of the car which I think is causing the most issues is the front wing because the Ferrari car does look to be a lot more understeery than oversteery as the Ferrari car so far has struggled in the slow corners and you do need a good front end in the slow corners. The rear end is more so for the fast corners. For the slow corners, you do need a good front end because if you don't, then you're gonna be giving away vital amounts of lap time to your rival teams. And as we know, Ferrari's front wing design is quite a bit different from the Mercedes front wing design. And I think that is what is causing the issues. But by the looks of it, Ferrari are going to continue with that design and just continue to improve that design if they can. But those are what I think have been the issues for Ferrari so far in 2019. And I don't think it will get any easier as 2019 goes on. I don't think with Ferrari... The issues they have are a quick fix and I don't think they will be fixed quick enough for them to be able to consistently go up against Mercedes, Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas for race wins. I think Ferrari will win a Grand Prix this season but I can't tell you which race that will be and I can't tell you how many they will win. They might only win one Grand Prix. 
But this is the thing, even if Mercedes do slip up at a Grand Prix coming up in 2019, who's to say Ferrari are going to be the ones to capitalise? Because, as we know, Red Bull are the best team at developing over the course of a season. And I think with Honda, they will improve as 2019 goes on. So, even if Mercedes are not quite there at a certain weekend, Ferrari will also have to contend with Red Bull who to me also have a better aerodynamic package. So if you are a Ferrari fan, I've got to be honest, 2019 has been a failure so far and it will go down as a failure. And from now on, it will not get any easier. It will just get tougher and tougher and tougher and the pressure is going to continue to mount, especially against Mattia Bonotto. I am very interested to see how Ferrari do over the coming races. I'm not expecting really that much anymore from Ferrari. I was expecting plenty in the first four races as sometimes I predicted them to win the Grand Prix. But from now on, I'm not expecting that much and I'm not expecting them to consistently be able to go for race wins anymore. Like they were, for example, in 2018 and even 2017. And I think if this does continue until we get to say Silverstone or Hockenheim around that time, it will become clear that 2019 is absolutely over for them and they need to concentrate on 2020 but also it will illustrate and show where Ferrari desperately need to improve compared to Mercedes if they're ever in their current form going to win a world championship because right now I can't quite see that happening. But there's my thoughts on Ferrari's disastrous 2019 so far. Let me know in the comment section, guys, whether you agree or disagree and what you think of Ferrari's 2019 so far and whether you think it can improve as the season goes on. And also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this as I'll be back with my next video on Saturday, which is the podcast previewing the next Grand Prix in Spain. But until next time, guys, it's been me. Chazer HD. Goodbye.